Community Forum is sponsored by the Easton Grange 196 and a friend of Yardley Wood Rink and the Easton Lions Club. There's a storm across the valley The clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheels just makes it colder. Good morning and welcome to Community Forum. Today is March 26, 2024. I'm Priscilla Almquist Olson, your host, and today I am interviewing Jamie Stebbins, who is a member of your select board here in Easton. And Jamie is running for re-election, uh, and this is the third in the series of informing you uh, of who are the candidates for select board uh, in Easton. So welcome, Jamie. Thank you, Priscilla. Thanks for having me again, too. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great. Yeah. And uh, so tell me, why did you decide to uh, run for re-election? So we, we had some success. And I know three years ago when I sat here and talked with you, the learning curve being uh, what it was, I was a bit, uh, you know, in intimidated by what we had in front of us. And uh, we, we've learned a lot and we've had some real success with both the municipal building project that uh, we're actively uh, in the midst of. Um, we've seen a number of other projects uh, that people before me set the you know, trajectory. I talk about standing on the shoulders of giants and it's, it's really true. Uh, coming in, I've had the fortune, the good fortune of, of having so many people before me set the table and put us in a position where we are finishing project after project right now, which you and I will talk a bit about. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of that through, some uh, the municipal <clears throat> building project being one, uh, which will be completed uh, in 2027. Yes, and that was a big undertaking, wasn't it? Yes, yes. It's, it's a big undertaking because, you know, we talked about it for a long time. We, it goes back to Dor Whittier, uh, days when we came, you know, we had uh, uh, an audit done on the buildings and found that programmatically we were never going to meet our needs in the buildings that were built, you know, 1950s and earlier um, in a town that was a fraction of the size it is today. So we were, mm -hmm. you know, a town of less than 10,000 when a lot of these buildings were built. Today we're pushing 26,000. And we're at the precipice now of having buildings that will meet our needs for the next 50 years. Yes, I know. And the um, I was around when the town was 6,000 people. So I understand um, we are in a new age, we have new technology, and we have uh, new needs, environmental especially, uh, was a big concern, I think, for, for you and, and the other board members and for those of us in the town who are very sensitive to that. So um, tell me, uh, how is our financial situation at the moment? Yeah, so we're in the midst of budget season right now, which uh, keeps folks here uh, up late at night, including <laughs> our ECAT team. So I want to thank them because they were out late last night as we wrapped up a uh, lengthy select board meeting. And we'll have a number uh, more of those before we get to town meeting in May. So we're, we're actively mm -hmm. working on... Um, Balancing the budget, and every year, if, if, if everyone we kind of go back and do a little history lesson, the last uh, override we did was, uh, you know, operational override was in 2007. So it's been a long time, um, and, you know, soon after that override, you had the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, and so that really ate up a lot of, uh, I think, what we had worked and, and created. So. Uh, now we continue to find ourselves in a structural deficit, which means that it takes a lot of work mm -hmm. by department heads, by the town administrator, by the assistant town administrator and the select board to find ways to get creative, um, to make sure we balance that budget, which we, by law, have to do. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, it just seemed like yesterday we had that override, but it's been a long, long time. So we in Easton are grateful for that, I'm sure. Um, I, I know I am. Uh, now, Senator Timothy had a bill 
<clears throat> as I understand it, to help seniors. Uh, and do you have any idea what the status of that is? Yeah, so I know we talked not too long ago, mm -hmm. and it does continue in the current House legislative mm -hmm. um, session. So we're hopeful that by August we'll have some information on that. Yeah, I know it takes a long time. I interviewed Carol Doherty, uh, one of Eastern's rep representatives in the House um, last week, and uh, she, th she reminded us about the length of time <clears throat> it can take to get a bill through. Uh, and it was very informative for the viewers and for me, uh, the steps that one has to take in order to um, move a bill forward. And that movement can be very slow. And sometimes it can take years, even five years, and she said in some cases 10 years. So there has to be a lot of pressure put on uh, uh, the, the representatives and, uh, and, and other ones, those who aren't your reps, you, you know, uh, to get the word to them that this is a, uh, a crisis for seniors with the additional tax burden. So my understanding is that they will, uh, seniors will benefit by not having to pay the increase that the new building uh, buildings will incur to uh, the ordinary taxpayer. Yeah, so the, it's the Home Rule Petition for Senior Property <clears throat> Tax Exemption Program. Um, and it will, it, today, the way we're working it through the legislature mm -hmm. is much like the circuit breaker tax, where it's a means-based um, application. And if uh, seniors meet that, and, and the nice thing is it's 80% of, of AMI, unlike the state means, which is poverty level and below, we look at the average median income in, in the area. Mm -hmm. So it's not... I think it's. I think AMI actually stands for area. Um, I mean, I've got it written down here, but yeah, it's it's um, area median income. Mm. So that's a big plus because that's very different than what the state means testing is. So that's if that um, comes to fruition, you're right. The three most expensive years of the project, the first three years that we're fully bonded and online, we would uh, take those applications to mm. exempt those folks that qualify from great tax years <clears throat> and I think that was a wonderful uh, thing to do uh, and hopefully we can all encourage Senator Timothy to uh, and Carol Doherty and Mr. Cassidy to push that bill through um, and if you know other uh, officials in other districts uh, get, call them too and just give your uh, opinion on that it's it's very important because there's we have so many seniors here in Easton, and most of them are on <clears throat> very fixed incomes, some very low incomes, and so this can be disastrous or can be a wonderful benefit. Uh, the sooner it's done, the better it is, and and it it has to be done because you're you're coordinating this with um, next year's taxes. I mean that's going to be the most expensive year, isn't it? No, actually that's the <clears throat> one benefit we do have right now, Priscilla, is that. Uh, the project will go out for bid, and that's a good uh, good timing to oh, give you an update too. Since we last right. met, I've got a few updates on where we stand mm -hmm. with the um, timeline of the project. And good news is everything continues to be on time. Not a surprise for me, and, and really for the community because we're working with PMA, because we're working with Castle mm -hmm. and Booze, and these are folks that we've had these relationships with, and they have proven time and again uh, to keep us not only on time but below budget. Below budget. <laughs> and, and right now, so give you that update is that. We are just about complete with the design uh, documentation uh, period right now. It'll be going to uh, estimators very soon. Uh, and that's slated for late, late April uh, before we then move on in May and June to the permitting process where you go through planning, zoning, um, and then we'll get into the construction document phase. So everything moves along. There's been a couple of changes that have been made. One of them was the community room and the um, headquarters building for the combined police and, and fire uh, was slightly moved. A few changes were made. It's reducing costs because of the amount of walkway when they started to look at uh, where we were gonna have the entrance versus where the public parking would be. They were able to reduce quite a bit of oh. additional walkway, mm -hmm. which is a savings to us. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's that attention to detail. When you've got, and again, you're gonna go to professional estimators here at the end of April, You've got Kessel and Booz who are doing their own estimating. PMA is doing their own estimating. Combined, each one of these groups has managed between 100 and 300 projects. So they see a lot of, you know, and we're talking everything down to drywall, mm. to bricks, 
to you name it, every single piece of the project, once all designs are completed, they go through and comb through and tell you what it's gonna cost you. Mm -hmm. And then we look for value engineering and value management. And we continue to do that process. We're going through it now. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't you know, s tell you enough how proud I am of the, the team that's working on this, including the municipal buildings team led by Andy Williams, who's- That you are on, you're a member. That's right, but it's, it's that team that brings so much more subject matter expertise than I have. Um, and isn't and that because most of them are engineers? We and, a lot of engineers. And an architect. An architect, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic. And, and mm -hmm. that's what they say, right? Surround yourself with smart people. Right, <laughs> so. so important. Now, when do you think construction may begin? Is there any estimate on that? There is, so that, that thank you for asking, because what'll happen is the construction design or excuse me, the construction documentation phase will be completed by the end of November, mm -hmm. which means our bid package will be ready to go. So December, January, February, uh, so now you're into 2025, you've gone out to bid. We'll wait for all those bids to come back. We'll vet them much like we did with the school project where we make sure we're getting the best construction <coughs> firm to handle a project of this size and scope. And once we award, uh, that um, the project to the, the winning bidder, uh, then we will begin shortly thereafter. So the, the plan is about 18 months. So you figured this is spring of 2025 mm -hmm. that we've awarded the contract. By spring, or really call it February of 2027, we'll have the project completed. Mm -hmm. So I guess Wonderful. it's closer to two years, but that that is the, the construction period from mm. 2025, 2026, and completion in early 27. So that's smart because you've got the spring, summer, and fall of 25 to do the all the outside work, I imagine, right? From the construction point of view. That's right. And then um, when it's winter, you, you know, the in, interior construction can be done. Yeah. So it uh, makes perfect sense. The timing is great. And uh, so when will the tax bill um, be a little more onerous? <laughs> Which is it? Yeah, 26? it's not till we take the keys and we move in. So that's the good news. It's actually twenty seven. Oh. Okay. That's when you would be because you have a ban. You wouldn't actually go to full bond until okay. uh, the completion of the project, right? So, so you're looking at twenty seven before we get into our most costly years, which would then be call it uh, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, mm -hmm. and those are the years that we're seeking uh, the circuit breaker for qualifying for seniors. Yeah. Seniors. Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, hopefully. Uh, it won't be, uh, it, it'll happen before that year. Uh, Correct. That, that, that they'll pass this. Uh, and there's no reason to. I mean, they're all, I would think every municipality that's represented in the House and the Senate uh, will have such bills that are time sensitive. And so uh, one legislator in one district should uh, be voting for the bill of another district because it's in their interest to, to, be, to get the benefit sometime in the future when they need it, yeah. right? That's right. And it does buy us some time. If it didn't work out this legislative period, it gives us another legislative period to get this done. Right. Because you can imagine we won't be slowing up on that. We've, we're doing an amazing job now. You've got our taxation aid committee, which is supercharged with some ARPA funds. We were able to place $100,000 into that. So that's another option for folks who need some assistance. Mm -hmm. um, you can reach out to them. And that uh, has, that's not age related, is it? No, that's, that's for veterans. It's mm -hmm. for, you're right, anyone that meets the, you know, again, means testing right. uh, and mm -hmm. application process. Uh, and there's also, you know, there's today uh, some work, uh, you know, you can work based uh, tax relief programs. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a number of, number of things that that group is looking at. And um, it, now the, the work based one is, uh, where uh, I think it's at the, whatever the, the state minimum wage is, and that can, in Massachusetts, as we know, that continues to increase. Mm -hmm. So those people are getting the benefit of that. Uh, it's not the federal, which is seven fifty an hour, I believe, still. No, it's more like sixteen, I think, here in Massachusetts. Hmm. And um, so, but uh, there are a lot of positions available in all the different departments, whether it's DPW or the police, or the library or the town offices themselves, uh, where seniors can apply to work. Uh, and for each hour, they get $16. 
but that uh, and, and the cumulative amount after one year uh, is reduced reduces their tax bill. So you don't get the cash, but in a sense, but you get the reduced tax bill. That's right. And I think uh, so. You have twenty five. I think twenty five places for seniors, and then another is it ten or twenty five for veterans. So any veteran of any age can apply, uh, and the town, so the select board made those slots available a few years back to accommodate veterans. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fantastic. And while we're talking about the Department of Health and Community Services, we should talk a little bit about Kristen Kennedy. She's the director, and then uh, two folks, new to a new deputy director, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not going to mess up Tracy Levine's uh, title, so I'm actually going to read it. But she is now the deputy director of Health and Community Services financial and veteran services. Right. And mm-hmm. she had worked um, for quite some time as the benefits and grants navigator. So we're very excited to have these professionals. And you've got Joe Pitty, who's also another deputy director working mm-hmm. for Kristen Kennedy, and he's on the mm-hmm. recreational and And you know, um, they're, they're, they have engagement. very impressive credentials too. For example, Joe Pitty is getting his doctorate. Uh, you know, so, so the quality of, of, of personnel is, is, is amazing. And, uh, uh, we, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm yeah. glad you hit hit that point that he's working. He's completing a PhD, right. uh, and you've got uh, Tracy who has a master's, and hers is in science and human service management. Yeah, and you know, um, uh, Tracy uh, has provided a lot of of people who have come to me, and I've referred them to her uh, with all kinds of resources. So, especially seniors. So, if you need to know about um, uh, oh, having a senior moment. Um, you know, if you need to have insulation in your house, you need to have weatherization, or you need to have uh, assistance with fuel uh, or electricity or whatever, she was the go-to person who could set you up, help you apply, and, and get the benefits. Who's taking her job? So she's going to wear uh, some additional hats for a little while. Oh, okay, until yep. you find somebody. That's right. And so that's... <clears throat> But I'll say this too, this came up last night as we're working through the budget. Easton, when you look at per capita, we have the fewest number of employees operationally. So on our, you know, from the town side of the balance sheet. It, really? It is, per capita, we are the fewest of any community in Massachusetts. Does that mean we're more efficient? Or does it mean that people work harder and longer? It means both. It means we are more efficient and that we continue to look for efficiencies, which is how we've mm-hmm. been able to stave off another operational override mm. um, all this time. It just means that we keep going back to the same well, too, right? And we, and we do want to be careful because we do, as we've just highlighted two uh, or three, if you include Kristen, employees that are fantastic uh, assets to this community. And we do not want to lose those folks, which means we don't want to keep the pressure up where they're working uh, the number of hours that we're asking them to work. And um, so there's, they're, they're, that's the give and take here. We need to, you know, do a good job of, um, you know, being stewards of, of those folks. Um, there's, there's going to be more conversation about this. Yeah, and let's not forget Chris, uh, uh, Kristen Kennedy because she has uh, done a magnificent job, uh, lots of responsibility, and it's her management and uh, that's created this great team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, there's 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 some gaps, but we fill those gaps, and then that's where these folks step up and and uh, do a fantastic job. The other thing job. I wanted to mention about Kristen is she is so open to suggestions. So viewers, if you have an idea uh, that the um, com- community health department can uh, uh, can envision as as a benefit to uh, not just seniors but to all people in in Easton, uh, children because the recreation uh, which Joe Pitty oversees uh, is you know also uh, involves young young children um, all the way to seniors. So if you have an idea for a program or for a need, a benefit that's that's do, uh, sorely needed, give Kristen a call and um, just go on the website, the East Town of Eastern website, and find her phone number. So uh, she's very open to that. And she also creates programs. She she sees a need, somebody talks about a need, and she says, well, let's do this. That's um, right. So Finds a way to that, partner with... Right. So she's very proactive. 
uh, she doesn't just sit back and, uh, and sit on her laurels as to the different programs and sort of manage them. No, no, no. She's out there uh, creating new ones uh, with the same personnel. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. So what else do you have to tell I'm, us about? I'm just going to, before I jump off of that department, because there are so many great things, but Kristen, again, and that team has partnered now with William James College. So for folks looking oh. for any mental health, and this is completely, um, you know, private, but there's a way now to reach out and speak with someone and it's free of charge. So that's something that this team will also direct you to uh, the partnership they have with them, but our community health and paramedicine. Yeah, let's go back to that mental health one though. Yeah. Uh, it, it's called the Interface the police, Referral Service. Yeah, doesn't the police also refer uh, people to, uh, to get help in that regard? And that is another beauty of our community and we see it Every night that the select board meets and we have our department heads there is look at the teamwork between the fire, the police, and DPW. This is just so rarely found in communities where you have department heads that not only get along, but are actually there to improve each other's job performance mm. and improve the product that they deliver to our mm. you know, community. Mm. So it's fantastic. And we've seen a number of uh, incidents this just in the last couple of weeks that uh, police and fire have responded to and um, the way they, they work together and back each other up. And, you know, we had a missing person the other yeah. night who was mm -hmm. uh, found fortunately before, uh, you know, midnight. And uh, there's just a number of things. So Priscilla, you hit it. It's all these departments. It's Kristen working with them. It's Dave mm -hmm. Field. It's, you mm -hmm. know, it's um, Justin Alexander. Justin Alexander. It's Keith Boone. Keith Boone. It's it's all of them, and, and obviously Connor, and now we've got Sean Dugan, uh, who's our assistant mm -hmm. town administrator, but all these folks working together, and it makes it seem seamless mm -hmm. because of how professional they are and good at their jobs mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. So you're right, touching on that, the free community Narcan training course, free flu clinic, uh, the emergency preparedness and fall prevention um, you know, courses, bike safety courses, the swim safety course with Boston Children's Hospital and the dive team. So just all those things that are kind of fall under the community and health services. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly you have volunteers coming from police and fire to help out with so the So how, how do people find out? Is it to go to the town of Eastern website and, and check out what the programs are uh, that are available for all ages, isn't that? I mean, I didn't know about the swim program with children's. Yes, so certainly go, go to the, the website, like you said, mm -hmm. go to the department, so health and community services, and then reach out to any one of those folks that we talked about, whether it's Kristen, Tracy, Joe, they're happy to put anyone in touch. Yeah, with, and I think Joe employment. has is probably the person to uh, give us most of the information for recreation, for uh, right. programs for youth, and so forth. Uh, so what have been your biggest challenges, do you think, during the past term? Well, I came through COVID. <laughs> that was interesting. Right in the middle of it, right? Jen and I were uh, uh, campaigning, and this was 21. So that was a really unique time. It's so different now, right? So we were able to actually go talk to people in person, knock on doors, um, hold community events. We're actually in person. We couldn't do that in 21. Mm -hmm. You felt, I still went and knocked on doors, but stayed outside people's homes. Um, but you were very concerned how they would react and didn't mm -hmm. want to make anyone uncomfortable. So this is a completely different environment, mm -hmm. uh, happy to say, um, much uh, much more happy environment. And uh, so I think we just learned a tremendous amount, right? Coming through COVID, watching how well all these groups we just talked about, police, fire, DPW, everyone worked to keep not only uh, town employees safe, but our community outreach was mm -hmm. fantastic. Helping people get up to date with COVID shots, not having to travel outside of the community if they weren't able to, or even going to folks um, and a big, a lot of credit to um, uh, our paramedicine and, you know, mental, the, the, it's paramedicine and health, uh, community health team. Um, Tim Vamosi was a, was a really big part of that. He stepped up and as he always has in Who this community. That? Tim Vamosi, he's Captain Timothy oh. Vamosi with the fire department mm -hmm. uh, and has an office in the health and community services. So right in Frothingham oh. Hall and he's been the outreach and, worked very closely with the community uh, mm -hmm. throughout a lot of these stages of mm -hmm. getting through the pandemic. Well, I heard, I heard that um, pe people who were homebound got the shots uh, because somebody from the, from the town 
went that, to that person's house and administered it. That's fabulous. It really is. Mm. So, so uh, in terms of challenges uh, on your in your work on the board in the past year, what was the biggest challenge, do you think, from your point of view? You know, every budget season is a challenge because you don't want to see a program cut. You you know, when you see how well things operate today and when you, and we, mm -hmm. we just talked about this, how efficiently we run mm -hmm. and how few employees we have for a town of 26,000 that provides as much as it does, that is a huge challenge. Every budget cycle that we need to go back and ask department heads to cut another 10%. That comes from programs. That comes from, you know, services. That it's, if we, you know, we're not in a position to lose any more people. We don't want mm -hmm. to. So you're you're losing services then. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what is, uh, what's the outlook for this year? We have about three minutes left. Okay. So the outlook is that we're in a structural deficit. We're, we're, we're going to um, have to find a way to balance a budget that, um, you know, we're not there yet. We're, we're mm -hmm. off. Um, you know, I'll just say by close to two and a half million. Mm -hmm. And so that's going back to each of the department heads and saying, how creative can you get with the resources you have? And we've been doing this over mm -hmm. and over and over, which again is, um, becomes st stressful environment for, for everybody mm -hmm. to be in. So, so here's an opportunity for people to apply for the senior tax relief program, uh, because you could have volunteers that could fill, especially in the recreational area, fill some of these uh, tasks. So that uh, would require some ingenuity and creativity, and I know you're all up to it. Uh, so, Bolin, so please think about that, people. Yeah. Uh, and you, and if you do apply for the senior tax relief program, think, uh, call the uh, call the, the town office and ask them if there are volunteer positions that will help them with uh, balancing the budget, so that you can actually, because when you sign up, that the categories are libraries and so forth. But there may be certain positions which are now currently being paid positions, which could certainly be fulfilled by a volunteer who's qualified. And I'll just plug one other thing is go to go to the Easton website, like I said, easton.ma.us backslash budget. The team just put together a really thoughtful, explains what structural deficit is and explains where we've come since 2007 and why we are where we are. Okay, so let's put that, uh, viewers, we're going to have that on the, uh, on the screen for you to write down. Uh, and uh, certainly, Jamie, we wish you all the best of luck. Um, and what would you tell us? What's your pitch? Why should you be reelected? Tell the viewers. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to serve the first three years. And um, with another three years, it's it's to continue the work I'm doing with the Green Communities Committee, the Municipal Buildings Committee, the Budget Subcommittee, and certainly with the Select Board uh, to continue to provide thoughtful. Uh, insight when I can, and, and obviously we don't always agree on the select board, but that difference in opinion is important too. It's important mm -hmm. that we see issues from different angles, and I think that's what I bring to the table is a different perspective, and I hope that uh, we get the opportunity to do it again. Great, because uh, that's so important, isn't it? To it's Because if everybody agrees, hmm, maybe there's something wrong there, maybe there's something right there, but it's important to see the um, different views and different opinions. Uh, and that brings us to compromise and it brings us to conclusion uh, and, and progress. So thank you, Jamie Stebbins. Thank you, Priscilla. For being my guest today. And this is Priscilla Almquist Olson bidding you farewell. And until next time, be well. There's a storm across the valley Clouds are rolling in. Community Forum is sponsored by the Easton Grange 196 and a friend of Yardley Wood Rink and the Easton Lions Club.